give yourself to the dark side. There's a battle raging on our planet between the light and the dark side. Although not between the Jedi and the Sith. Sorry, Star Wars fans. Us astronomers are fighting on the dark side because we need the darkest places on Earth in order to enjoy an uninterrupted view of our cosmos in all its glory. Unfortunately, these dark places are under threat like never before. Welcome to Chasing Starlight. I'm Susanna Randall, an astronomer at the European Southern Observatory ESO. And normally, I love light. But today, I'm inviting you to escape the brightness and come with me to the dark side. Believe me, if you've never been to the dark side, you don't know what you're missing. Unfortunately, it's becoming harder and harder to leave the bright side behind, even at night. Because, like all types of pollution that are affecting our natural environment, light pollution seems to be everywhere these days. Light pollution happens when artificial lights alter the natural outdoor lighting. And it's of course particularly prevalent in cities and industrial areas. Unnecessary light pollution can be caused by things such as billboards, excessive security lighting, or badly designed street lamps. Not only are these a waste of energy and money, but they also affect our health and wildlife. But for me as an astronomer, there is another more pressing issue, because light pollution affects how well we can observe the night sky. Take for instance, the center of Munich, Germany, which is where I live. It's a pretty bright place, even by night. If you look up into the sky, you might see couple of stars, the planet Jupiter, maybe make out a couple of constellations, but that's about it. If we go further out into the countryside, all of a sudden the sky begins to darken and the stars pop out. And with a bit of luck, you can even see the Milky Way. See it up there? It's that fuzzy white band of light that is made up of billions of stars that are far away and our eyes can't distinguish. That's why it has this hazy, milky appearance. Pretty amazing, right? Like what you've seen so far? Well, it gets even better than that. I call that more of the dim side rather than the dark side. In order to give you a glimpse of what the night sky can really look like, we're gonna have to go on a trip across the ocean all the way to Chile. This is ESO's Paranal Observatory, deep in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. And it's one of the last places on Earth with a perfectly dark sky. Although calling the sky dark is a little bit misleading because it's so alive with stars. The stars shine so brightly that they make shadows on the ground. And being in the Southern Hemisphere, we can see the center of the Milky Way and also our satellite galaxies, the Magellanic Clouds and they really do look a bit like clouds. But as nearby cities grow, light pollution keeps on advancing on even the darkest places on Earth. And even far away from cities and light pollution on Earth, there is another threat obscuring our view of the night sky. Wait, what's that? You may have also seen these lights or trains of lights crossing the sky, but what are they? Could they be UFOs? Yeah, I wish. Unfortunately, the truth is not as exciting. These are satellite constellations launched by companies such as SpaceX's Starlink. Several companies have launched or are launching satellites or constellations of satellites into low Earth orbit. The aim is to provide services such as fast internet to remote areas of the world. That's great for these areas of the world, but for astronomy it poses a problem. The thing is that although satellites don't shine themselves, they do reflect light, similar to the way the moon does. And this means that particularly during the twilight hours, we can observe them as bright specks moving across the sky. On astronomical images, they can ruin the entire image, or at least cause streaks on the image. The issue is particularly bad for wide-field telescopes. Such telescopes serve large patches of sky in one go, and while we might be able to deal with just one streak of light on an image, dealing with hundreds on a wide-field image is a completely different matter. 
Another area where satellites can cause issues is planetary defense, because the streaks left on the images could be masking asteroids, some of which might even hit our planet. One of the issues is that satellites can be quite bright, in particular just after launch. So last year there was one satellite that at times was as bright as the most visible stars in the sky. But while one of them may not be a problem, thousands of them certainly are. Right now we have around 8,000 satellites in low Earth orbit, but in the next years this number could increase to as much as 500,000, at least if companies such as SpaceX and Amazon make good on their promise. Now that would really put the dark side under attack. By this point, I've hopefully convinced you to come over to the dark side. But it may feel like we're fighting a losing battle because cities are just gonna to continue to grow and the number of satellites up there is not gonna get any less, right? Of course, these things are all part of humanity's technological progress, but can't we progress without ruining our view of the night sky? Well, there are campaigns to preserve our view of the universe, and ESO is actively involved in some of them. In Chile, ESO funds initiatives to raise awareness of light pollution and to find solutions, such as changing street lamps, for example. Concerning the satellite issue, ESO has petitioned the UN to protect the dark skies and make satellites fainter. And these efforts have started paying off. Many companies have changed their satellites, painting them darker so that they become less reflective and fainter. Of course, this doesn't solve all of the problems, but at least it's a step in the right direction. I don't know about you, but I will keep on taking every opportunity I can to go out and marvel at the dark night sky. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and to be notified of future episodes of Chasing Starlight, activate the notification bell. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. For every episode, we will answer some of your questions.